There are a lot of misconceptions about what is spoken of in the Bible concerning an abomination of desolation and an apostasy or a great falling away in God's church. However, both are directly connected with each other and have everything to do with when the world would enter the final period of what is spoken of as the end time. Now, Christ gave two and only two great signs that people could look to in order to prove two important events that concern the truth that He is the Messiah. One sign would be to the world and the other sign to God's own church. God's church is very knowledgeable of that first sign which traditional Christianity has never acknowledged. Before His death on Passover, He stated that the only evidence He would leave the world that He was actually the Messiah would be in one sign that would be given. That's in Matthew 12, verses 38 through 40, where it says, Then certain of the scribes and of the Pharisees answered, saying, Teacher, we want to see a sign from you. But he answered and said to them, An evil and an adulterous generation seeks after a sign, and no sign shall be given to it except the sign of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the great fish, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Now, the world of traditional Christianity has rejected that proof. The only sign whereby Christ would give proof that He was the Messiah. Traditional Christianity teaches that Christ died mid-afternoon on the sixth day of the week and was placed in the tomb later that day just before sunset, late on Friday. They refer to this day as a Good Friday. So this belief, held by traditional Christianity, actually disproves that Jesus was the Messiah, that He was the Christ because they reject the true sign He gave. Because you can't get three days and three nights from just before sunset on Friday to a Sunday morning. So Christ was placed in the tomb just before sunset on a Wednesday, then resurrected on the weekly Sabbath, the seventh day of the week, just before sunset, and thereby being in the tomb exactly three days and three nights just as He said, would prove that He was the Messiah. But what was the second great sign? The sign He left for the church. This sign would actually mark the beginning of a countdown to His return, His second coming, to fulfill His role, His place as the Christ, the Messiah, in the kingdom of God. Now, the disciples didn't know that Christ was about to be put to death as the Passover for all mankind when they asked about when it would be that He would establish God's government, the kingdom of God on earth. He first told them, as they had just been looking at the greatness of the construction of the temple, that there would not be one stone left upon another. Now, this prophecy about those stones was not intended as a physical fulfillment that was to take place, but it had a spiritual fulfillment for when God's church would become scattered in the end time. In the rest of what he stated, that is known as the Olivet Prophecy, Christ broke down the events that would lead up to this fulfillment of the stones being cast down. Matthew 24, 14 goes on to say that this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness to all nations, and then shall the end come. Herbert Armstrong understood that this verse was about his commission, the work that he was to do. He was God's apostle sent to restore truth to the church when the era of Sardis was coming to a close a time when most truth had been lost to the church. And he was sent to preach the gospel to the world to the degree God intended it to be fulfilled as the end time was coming. Indeed, as God's apostle toward the end time, Herbert Armstrong was used to restore truth to the church. 
It is the truth that no one in the scattered groups would have today except for the proof that God worked through Herbert Armstrong to restore his truth to his own church. He was also given to spread the good news of the coming kingdom into all the world. God gave him to know that this was his commission, that this was his work to accomplish. But when he would refer to that commission in Matthew 24, verse 14, he didn't continue on to the next verse. And that's because it did not apply to his time, but is about what would follow after his work was accomplished, after it was completed. Verse 15 continues, Therefore, when you shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place, then whoso reads, let them understand. Far too many in God's own church haven't understood this and have taken this to mean something physical about the actual physical temple. But in the last few years of his life, Herbert Armstrong began to speak out mightily to the church that Christ was not returning to a physical temple, but to a spiritual one, because the temple being spoken of is about the church. Yet some have believed and have taught that because of what it says about the abomination of desolation, Daniel referred to, that something must take place in the end time that would be akin to what happened in 168 B.C. when Antiochus IV Epiphanes desecrated the temple by erecting a statue of Zeus in the temple and having a pig offered before it upon the altar. So some ministers in the scattered church had believed that some parts of the physical temple must be rebuilt, or as a former evangelist and one of the larger groups stated, that at least an altar must be erected. Why? Because they believe something physical, like a pig being sacrificed, must once again be repeated. However, the account in Daniel had a dual prophetic fulfillment. The first fulfillment was a physical one and was about Antiochus Epiphanes and what he did. But Christ was explaining that there would be another fulfillment, a spiritual fulfillment. That spiritual fulfillment would come about when an abomination of desolation would occur in God's own church, in the spiritual temple of God. This spiritual fulfillment would happen as a sign to God's church that Christ's coming was now imminent and an actual countdown to His coming would begin. But this sign has been mostly rejected by God's own church as it became scattered into over 600 different organizations after what happened that caused that scattering. Who can deny the result of such events that have produced the current state of what happened to God's church when this abomination of desolation took place in December 1994, when Joseph Tkach Sr. gave his infamous sermon in Atlanta that began to cause a desolation, a destruction, and a massive scattering in the very church of God. Why do so many who are scattered into these many organizations reject what Christ had to say about the importance of this event. The second great sign, and one that would occur in the period of the end time, was given to actually reveal to God's church that the time had now come for the end of this age and Christ's imminent second coming. That sign was experienced by all in God's church but it was not readily accepted by God's church, although it should have been. This event would be so devastating to God's own people, referred to here as Judea, about spiritual Judah, in other words, the church, that they were warned to flee into the mountains. And this will be explained a little more fully, but it 
It's about a time in which the church would be scattered. In prophecy, mountains are used to symbolize governments. It's about a time of scattering of God's own church, when even the organized government of the church within the ministry would itself become scattered, and that people would then flee into these different governments, mountains for safety. This event of the second fulfillment, a spiritual fulfillment of the abomination of desolation, is about what happened to God's own church after December of 1994, when the church was thrust into a massive scattering of God's own people. This account actually fulfilled another prophecy that the Apostle Paul was given to record about a great falling away, an apostasy in God's own church. The next video to follow this one will focus on that apostasy as many don't fully grasp what actually became fulfilled prophetically in that event in 1994. This information is covered far more thoroughly in two free publications. A booklet that was written not long after this event occurred in the church squarely focuses on what actually happened after this abomination of desolation took place. It is entitled, Time is Running Out. It can be found on the publication page of the cog-pkg.org website. Now this information and much more about a literal countdown that has been ongoing since 1994 can be found in a new book just published that's also free. And the title of that book is When the Countdown Ends and can be found at Countdown ends, just as one word, countdownends.com.